Chairman and to the uh, Ranking Member, and also thank you to our, our witnesses. You know, I, I said I read all of your, um, your testimony, and I will just say for the record, I'm a proud member of the Sierra Club. I was on the board of the League of Conservation Voters, both in Maryland and nationally. I love the work of the National Resources Defense Council, work with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, um, care deeply and passionately about my in, uh, environment. And not because I'm a prophet of doom, not because I'm a socialist, not because I'm an alarmist or an extremist, not because I shriek, not because I'm an eco radical or a hysterical enviro type, um, and not because I'm part of a green tyranny. And so I would hope that we could actually have a conversation about the environment and the importance of uh, the government's role in regulating our environment for our clean air and our clean water, because people like me who um, have been advocates for our, our, our environment come from it because we are concerned citizens in our community. I look at the work that I have done over the years uh, living in a metropolitan Washington area that is not anywhere near my colleagues' district on the eastern shore, and not, yet I care deeply about protecting our Chesapeake Bay from stormwater runoff that is created here in the metropolitan area because we have such huge uh, impacts. Now, that doesn't impact my community, but it does impact my state where hundreds of thousands of jobs are at risk, um, where our, our, our bay uh, could have been dead had it not been for the great work of the Environmental Protection uh, um, uh, Agency and our, our state in making sure that we preserve and protect our bay, and where billions of dollars of commercial interests are at stake if we don't protect that bay for jobs and our, our overall economy. And so um, I hope we can get away from the name calling and really focus truly on what it is going to take from all of us um, in business and industry, in the, in the private sector. Um, um, in our, our Federal and State governments and our local communities to preserve and protect our uh, environment, to clean our air and our water. Uh, when I was a young working mother, I caught a bus on the side of a, 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 a road, a highway, uh, and every day I would stand there with my son in a stroller uh, while the emissions were pouring out of every single vehicle going across those highways. So do I think it is a great idea um, that those emissions are now uh, regulated, that our, our air is getting cleaner, it is not quite, uh, quite there yet. Do I think it is a good idea that we have made investments in clean fuel uh, transportation so that uh, people like me, young moms standing on the side of the road to catch a bus, are they and them, their children breathing in uh, that air? Absolutely I do. And the, and the role of the Federal Government is to make sure that it protects citizens like me. Um, and so with that, I want to ask um, Mr. Um, Mr. Trupak, a couple of questions. In your testimony, you stated that the environmental industry uh, agree that we are at a crossroads, but that solutions operate at two extremes. You state further that if you don't support new environmental initiatives in every EPA program, then you therefore support a return to the bad old days of unlimited, unrestrained ecological damage. Uh, what exactly is the other extreme of that argument that you posit? And have you heard such an argument ever presented in this committee or this Congress? By this committee and this Congress, no. And, and I believe I qualified that statement uh, that there are certain uh, environmental extremists who are invested in this kind of uh, culture of doom, and that that is the message that we hear, I hear, um, from, from that end of the spectrum. And so who are those people exactly? Who are those people? Yeah. Um, I hear that from environmental activist groups. I have heard that from Sierra Club members. I have had that debate with the uh, Illinois chapter of the Sierra Club. I have heard that from NRDC and others. Well, as I said, I mean, I am a member of one of those groups, and I am neither an extremist or an alarmist, but I am concerned about our environment. Uh, also in your um, testimony, as you have said, you have provided a fair amount of criticism to the Sierra Club, the NRDC. Uh, researchers, academia, and industry. Um, quote: You said you've said that the relevance depends on uh, depends on them discovering, quantifying, and publicizing uh, sources of risk. Do you think that they're making it up? I think they're vastly exaggerating it. Any we live in a, a world of risk. Um, there is risk associated with the emissions from our own breath. You can find a few parts per billion the pollutants that people would say that's a carcinogen in your own breath. I think it is the magnitude of risk that is routinely exaggerated. Well, I mean, what you have just described is actually way more extreme than I have ever heard in any of my Sierra Club meetings. Um, you have also stated that it is the advantage of some commercial sectors to create 
a climate of fear. What do you mean by that? I mean that there are people, and you will see the commercials, like for instance, say the example I gave of an a indoor air purifier that uses ozone to purify the indoor air, the very pollutant that Dr. Goldstein and others have said we need to protect ourselves from. And, but people sell those kind of products taking advantage of that kind of climate of fear, that your air is bad inside, so you need this product. And so I know my time has expired. Um, and can you just tell me the, um, your scientific background and your uh, scientific research background that qualifies you to make those statements? Um, I'm a chemist. Um, I don't have a scientific research background. Um, and my experience has wholly been in the field of air quality for the past 30 years. I've participated in uh, EPA committees. I've taught a number of classes at different universities and, and for uh, different organizations. And for the, uh, for the record, you've also challenged climate science as pseudoscience, but you haven't done any climate science research, right? I haven't done any climate science Great. research. Thank, Thank you. you.